Thank you so much, everybody. Welcome, welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for those of, you, uh, those of you keeping score, exactly two weeks from today, America will hold the midterms, and I am mid-sided. I'll tell you why. Because on election night, The Late Show will be live right there. <laughs> you know that's The Late Show promise. We never leave you hanging. We will give you updates on all the races as Americans turn out to answer this year's big question, democracy, hot or not? <laughs> and it looks like, it's beginning to look like we're going to have a nail-biter here because polls have the race tightening as Republicans gain momentum. But in what could be a good sign for Democrats, early voting turnout is breaking records, possibly because of those signs outside of polling stations, democracy closing, everything must go. <laughs> You know? I'm so crazy! <laughs> crazy Eddie's democracy sale. Midterms are typically a referendum on the sitting president, which is why Joe Biden is getting out there with a powerful closing message. I am also aware that I am very old. I think it's a legitimate thing to be concerned about anyone's age, including mine. I think that's totally legitimate. But I think the best way to make the judgment is to, uh, to, you know, watch me. You know, am I slowing up? Am I don't have the same pace? As her? You know, uh, and that old joke, you know, uh, um, everybody talks about the, you know, the new 70s, 50s, and all that stuff. Hey, hey, I get it. Joe gets it. I tell you. I got it, I got it. It's, it's like that old joke, you know, the one about the two fellas. I think one was a salesman. Other, I believe, was a lonely farmhand. There was definitely, <laughs> definitely a horse in there. We all laughed. That's the point. <laughs> point is, there was a man who got up to all kinds of shenanigans in Nantucket. God bless him. I hope he's okay. <laughs> the president followed that up with an even more reassuring message. I could get a disease tomorrow. I could, you know, drop dead tomorrow. I mean, come on. I, 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 I could die tomorrow. Anything could get me. Disease, <laughs> strong wind, <laughs> particularly spicy chili. <laughs> the Democrats are also rolling out a president from two terms ago who is somehow a million years younger, Barack Obama. <laughs> Yesterday, Obama... Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Anytime you want. Yesterday, Obama released a new get-out-the-vote aimed at the younglings. For those of you who are just turning 18 and were only three or four when I was elected, my name's Barack Obama. I was the 44th president of the United States, and I have the best jump shot in White House history. It's true, he has the best jump shot, but not the best dunk. That was President Rutherford B. Hayes. <laughs> B stands for baller. Then, to make his case, Obama showed the youths that he is still hashtag with it. I've heard a lot recently about how voting doesn't solve everything, and I can see why you might think that. It won't make Outer Banks or Euphoria Season 3 or Rihanna's new album drop any faster. Okay. <laughs> I love that man, but that has real youth pastor sitting in the chair backwards energy. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Listen. Listen. Listen, you guys. Listen, I'm gonna... I, I'm gonna yeet some truths your way. No cap. You know, Archie from Riverdale wasn't the only one to come back to life. Let me tell you about... about an influencer who got a lot of likes even though he only had 12 followers, okay? <laughs> now everyone partake of his body yaddy yaddy <laughs> There's another high-profile Democrat with a new ad. Senate Majority Leader and petting zoo tortoise thrilled to see the children. <laughs> Charles Schumer. Schumer's up for re-election in New York, and he just released this ad with a fun lesson in Yiddish. Let's start with an easy one. Schmoes. January 6th, Ashanda. 
Nachas, how we felt when we passed the boldest climate legislation in history. I'm Chuck Schumer, and I approve this message because fighting for New York is no shtick for me. Oy vey. <laughs> that is Meshuggana. <laughs> in this year's election, marijuana legalization is on the ballot in five states. Legalization <laughs> is growing in popularity, but of course it comes with its own issues. For instance, a new California lawsuit alleges one brand of weed didn't get the plaintiffs high enough. <laughs> apparently, Apparently, the stoners filing the lawsuit were furious that a cannabis company in California sold joints labeled with much higher THC content than they actually contained. THC is the ingredient that uh, gives weed the high, and these joints obviously did not contain enough THC because they were still able to file a lawsuit. <laughs> you smoke good enough weed. You smoke good enough weed. So I hear. So I hear. You smoke good enough weed, and the only reason you're calling your lawyer is to say, listen to this guitar solo. <laughs> Are you listening? Listen. <laughs> What'd you think? <laughs> Across the pond, everyone's welcoming Britain's new prime minister, uh, Rishi Sunak, seen here holding the briefcase that contains all of Britain's most magical wands. <laughs> At 42, Sunak is also the youngest UK prime minister in over 200 years, and is considered by many to be very handsome, leading to his nickname, Dishi Rishi. <laughs> so much better than their last prime minister's nickname. Hey, chief, there you are. <laughs> That's the lady over there. We'll never know. She wasn't there long enough to write her name down. <laughs> Really? Oh. <laughs> oh, for the last prime minister. You can't name her name. <laughs> On three, let's all say her name. One, two, three. Yes. Holy <laughs> Now you know it's Wow. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Please accept my apologies. <laughs> In his first speech as PM, Sunak warned that the UK is facing a profound economic crisis, but people are questioning if he really gets the plight of the average Briton because he is worth, and I'm rounding down here, a giga buttload. <laughs> Sunak and his wife's fortune has been valued at 730 million pounds, which I think is even more in Fahrenheit. His father-in-law is famous for co-founding software firm Infosys, which is worth $78 billion. And in an interview, Sunak once said this. I have friends who are aristocrats. I have friends who are upper class. I have friends who are, you know, working class. But I'm not working class. Oh. <laughs> oh. We know. <laughs> no one with that accent has working class friends. I know of all the regular folk, you know, Sir Wattingham of Twinsby, the Duke of Shropshire. <laughs> The Marquis de Chisholm, every Tuesday we go down to the gazebo and we shoot peasants with crossbows. It's a ripping good time. Yes. <laughs> Rishi's so richy that the Prime Minister's family is actually richer than the royals. Okay, sure, but that's after paying Prince Andrew's legal bills. Speaking, oh, Prince Andrew fans too? <laughs> really? What's his last name? He doesn't have one. <laughs> Never trust anyone who doesn't have a last name. Speaking of not being as rich as he used to be, music icon Kanye West, or, <laughs> or Ye, seen here pointing to his worst enemy. Today, Adidas finally ended their massive deal with Kanye West after his anti-Semitism controversy. To which I say, yay! So, no more shoe. If you want something as fashionable as Yeezys, you'll have to microwave a croc. 
I say, it's about damn time Adidas did something. Kanye's been calling him out. Listen to what he said 10 days ago. I could say anti-Semitic things and Adidas can't drop me. Now what? Now they dropped you. <laughs> the company... They dropped you. The company released a statement saying, after a thorough review, the company has taken the decision to terminate the partnership with Ye. Even worse for West, Adidas is now teaming up with Pete Davidson. <laughs> they just... Yes? Yep. They're making a new 10-inch shoe. In addition... Yeah? Yeah? Somebody reads the news? Somebody reads the news? <laughs> In addition to Adidas, several companies severed ties with Kanye, including fashion house Balenciaga, talent agency CAA, and Vogue. When asked for comment, a spokeswoman for Vogue said... I don't understand why it's so difficult to... Not be a Nazi! <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Priestley. We have got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Eddie Redmayne... 